welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. All right. Have we said, have we exhausted that topic? We have. We have. <laughs> well, I'm, I, we haven't. We haven't actually exhausted it, but for today, I think we have. For today. But, Let's uh, move on to Mike. Um, so, uh, Mike, what is DSA P2B? So as opposed to B2B, <laughs> Digital Service Act is a regulation that came out of Europe uh, that is start, it was implemented maybe a year and a half ago or and but taking date, effect now, taking effect now, the end of this yeah. month, beginning uh, end of August, it's taking effect. And it is it's basically to uh, allow for greater transparency and it only applies to large platforms and they have to have 45 million users in Europe. So it applies to Google, Facebook, you know, uh, Twitter, Amazon, Google, Apple, Amazon, right. X. X. And the idea was, is that they have to, you know, increase trans, these platforms have to increase transparency. They have to increase access for, of researchers to data. So researchers can, researchers can determine if how much content is bad. Uh, they have to shed more light on their policies. They have to expand transparency reporting. They have to help others analyze the risks of these platforms. Um, and as part of that, we have been seeing over the last two or three months, Google rolling out a number of processes and policies around these. In fact, they just rolled out two new ones today about appeal, a content removal on maps, and appeal a feature access restriction. Google has been restricting access. For example, some businesses are not allowed to post photos. They aren't, haven't been told why, or not allowed to answer Q and A. They haven't been told why. Those re access has been restricted because it, Google believed they were abusing them or something, some partial feature. So now you should be able to appeal those decisions through a form, and Google has implemented a bunch of new forms. And then if it's, Google has the right to deny it. And if it's denied, there is now a third party resolution for both consumers and businesses. The P2B is the platform to business solution where you can take these to mediation um, with the DSA, which is more for consumers. Uh, you can, there's some sort of out of court settlement body. It's not clear what they are, but it, it, it's, it's an arbitration like process, arbitration like right? process. The real question is with all of these new forms and transparency about policies we've seen, the real question is whether anything's going to change and whether Google really is more transparent or this is just performed, right? Transparency if, theater. It could be transparency theater. And that's my concern because now they've just added another layer of, okay, fill out this form with all the detail right. about this particular problem, send it in support. And then what happens? We don't know yet because these forms. Support gets back to you three years later, as Darren Shaw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This week. Right. And by, I mean, it, or just denies it. And then what happens? I mean, it's not clear that this is going to actually change outcomes. And as I've pointed out in the past, since most of this moderation is being driven by AI, there's a fairly high percentage of false positives and wrong, you know, outcomes. And so it, it may only delay solving these problems rather than fixing them. We'll see. I'm hope, I mean, it's nice that you, there are now forms where you can actually send the real problem to Google. What isn't clear is whether that will make a difference in the solution. Missing reviews, Website URLs stripped, uh, photos not approved, all of these issues which have been going on. It's not, you know, whether they will actually change or just have a new layer of process in the middle. It, it, interestingly, we're getting some, not all, some of those, uh, you know, I'll call them benefits, some of those benefits in North America, even though this obviously this these laws and rules apply to Europe exclusively, but because Google and others are global companies, at least in Google's case, they're they're creating these processes which will have some impact in North America and the U.S. Although right. you don't get you don't get the entirety of the, the the benefits. Yeah, you don't get the mediation or the ability to go to some third party, 
you know, necessarily the researchers may not get the ability to access the data. But they are publishing you know. policies and they are creating these forms and, and, and U.S. companies, North American companies have access to that. Yes, absolutely. But if it just is one more layer of process and doesn't create any different outcomes and people are still then left to guess that maybe if they go to the forum, they can have this benign photo reinstated after it was denied by their AI you know, or denied by human. I mean, it's just one more layer. I, again, we don't know. I mean, maybe these forms and processes will actually be taken seriously by Google and maybe they'll actually implement well, real. Well, I think that the, the reality is somewhere in the middle, right? I think what, what Google's creating these forms for sort of compliance or creating these processes uh, for, for kind of surface level compliance with the data Right, but the, to their credit, these forms do reflect the last two years worth of problems I've been looking at, right? The forums actually now speak to the problems that have been coming To actual out. problems. To actual problems. Yeah. They're not specious forms, right? Well, and so, so, um, yeah, mean, they've, they've implemented policies and procedures. Now we have to see. Well, so if there, there will need to be, there will need to be some, some threat of punishment, some actual punishment if, these things are not complied with in good faith for for there to be actual you know real compliance. And do you know if there's anything in DSA? Uh, well, they, I, I, yeah, undoubtedly there are. I mean, what what Europe has now done is like whatever X times your annual revenue. You know, some percentage of your five percent or whatever it is, some range of, of, of financial penalty, which is meaningful. The the, the problem with the the um, uh, GDPR, which is the privacy laws in Europe has been a lack of enforcement or lack of meaningful enforcement. So they've been on the books for a couple of years. Uh, there've only been sort of slaps on the wrist and and not very meaningful enforcement with some isolated exceptions. And that's the key to all of this is if there's meaningful enforcement, meaningful penalties for for non-compliance or for failure to comply, then then we'll see, you know, we'll see re it, it will cease to be performative. But unless or until that kind of thing happens, there'll be this sort of superficial uh, compliance that, you know, looks, it's the, it's the letter, but not the spirit necessarily. Right. But compliance may be just having processes to appeal. It doesn't really dictate whether or not. The well, outcomes is. can't be, comp outcomes can't be compliance, right? Because they can't right. dictate outcomes. They can only dictate. Uh, but if a high percentage process. of outcomes are arbitrarily decided against the user, Right. This doesn't solve any problems. Well, right. Point. That that would that would yield some investigation, I would think. If there were 100 percent or 90 plus percent of outcomes that that were uh, adverse to the to the to the the businesses that are appealing or engaged in the process, then that might trigger trigger right. an investigation. But that's that's, you know, sort of getting ahead of ourselves. Right. But noncompliance leads to up to six percent of annual worldwide turnover. I mean, Google... Right. Which is a massive number for companies like Facebook and Google. And right. But they, you know, have claimed now in their post today that they are now in full compliance. And of course, they, they very well could be. Again, it just doesn't mean it may well, or may well, not they're... mean something to the business. That's right. All. And then there's a different we don't we don't I mean, we're getting into the sort of the, the, the weeds here. Uh, but um, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I think in general, you know, the tech companies don't like these European rules. They see them as overly bureaucratic. They see them as 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 meddling in their kind of business models and business processes. But in the U.S., we have nothing. You know, we have the FTC, which is doing some stuff, but we really have have nothing that's going to protect the business or mostly, you know, we're talking about the business here, but but also the consumer in many cases, notwithstanding the FTC. Right. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.